margarita mix. We forgot to do that yesterday. Oh, okay. Cool. Thank you. Last time, it was filling paint pans and making swatch cards. This time, it's organizing the drawer of watercolors. Because there is no such thing as too many low thrills videos. Actually, organizing makes it sound more action packed than it actually is. Because I'm just adding the latest acquisitions. They're on the right hand side, and it looks to be about a dozen pans. Honestly, it took longer than it should have. But over the last decade or so, I've lost my hustle. And that's about the speed I move nowadays. That's right, this is not slowed down in post. In fact, I even cut out a bunch of footage so things would move along quicker. During the editing process, I chose to include background sounds from the original audio track. You know, for added authenticity. And maybe to prank less attentive viewers into thinking someone else is in the room with them and going through their stuff. The colors I'm adding in are Windsor and Newton's Gold Ochre, M. Graham's Nickel Quinacridone Gold, Quinacridone Rust, Quin Violet, Quin Rose, and Thalo Blue, Daniel Smith's Gray Titanium, and Van Gogh's Four Dusk Colors, plus their Oxide Black. Other new colors Da Vinci's Thalo Turquoise, Da Vinci Orange, and Daniel Smith's Hansa Yellow Deep had been added earlier. Before you start feeling sorry for the gal who gets her jollies from playing musical watercolor pans by herself, know that I was released from the studio on Memorial Weekend. It was a proper outing with two food stops and all. Well, the first food stop was at the Dutch Brothers location nearby. It had opened last year, but we hadn't gotten around to trying it out. Going out for a fancy espresso is such a rarity for us that when they took our order, we blurted out, something with salted caramel, please, which is how we ended up with a Dutch freeze flapjack. While technically a beverage, it's safe to bet it had more garbage than a Grand Slam at Denny's. An ice blended concoction of espresso, salted caramel, white chocolate, and vanilla. I savored the heck out of that thing all the way to the largest Daiso store I've ever been to. Seriously, it took producer Mike and I a good hour and a half to get through the aisles of bento boxes, stationery, cosmetics, storage containers, various housewares, and sweet and savory snacks. You might walk in thinking, I'll just grab an egg whisk real quick, but you'll walk out wondering, do I need all these erasers shaped like miniature food?
Sure, the liquid flapjack was a surprisingly satisfactory breakfast. But a few hours later, we were feeling the lack of proper sustenance. Good thing there just happened to be a katsu burger in the area. Also good things were the fact that we'd looked up driving directions and menu items the previous evening. Katsu Burger is a chain of about six or seven locations currently limited to the greater Seattle area. So I was looking forward to trying a curry burger for sure. But we couldn't resist eyeing the wall menu. And we got dazzled by the prospect of pineapple and bacon. So the samurai burger it was. The thing about getting dazzled, it makes you miss the little details, such as wasabi mayo. I am not a fan of wasabi. Look, I may be half Japanese, but the other half is very American with Scandinavian ancestry. I once got whacked in the head by a dodgeball when I was in fifth grade. Getting a rush of wasabi through the sinuses is sort of similar. But if I can deal with cilantro, then I can deal with wasabi. And once I got used to the occasional OMG, I can't breathe moment, it was actually delicious. Thanks to all the other stuff on the burger, like the deep fried beef katsu and tonkatsu sauce. Since we didn't get the curry burger like I'd planned, I made darn sure we got the curry seasoned fries with curry mayo dipping sauce. Over curried? Nope. And as yummy as that samurai burger was, it's the curry fries with curry mayo that I've been dreaming about for the past week. You know what? Screw the burger. Next time, it'll just be a double order of fries, all curried up. Oh, we didn't leave Daiso empty-handed. Among our stash of Japanese $1.50 goodies were these two storage containers, four and a quarter inches wide by eight and a half inches long and two inches high. They're plastic, and I purchased them specifically to store my paint tubes. It took me at least 20 minutes to decide because there were so many viable options, but I liked these best because they had lids, which, if need be, could be used as containers too. Oh, and we got a bag of you-know-who's favorite Japanese candy. I choose. Thank you.
I am happy to share Mike and Irene's Drive of Deliciousness, a story full of anticipation, uncertainty, drama, and yes, even danger, because I was ready to fight for the last of the curry fries. Until next time, resist the mini food erasers and read the small print. You never know when someone will try to slip cilantro in your salsa or wasabi in your burger. And stay artsy, my friends.